The fact that the same process that gives you the elixir you need to fuel your mental health through this dystopian hellscape is the same process that fuels your car, truck, or rocket ship is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. Now, distillation is just the process used to separate the components of a liquid. And most of us are most commonly familiar with alcohol distillation, although for legal purposes, this is a jar of water, which you can also distill, and we'll get to that. Now, distilling the feel-good juice involves taking a liquid where yeast has eaten up all of the sugar and produced alcohol. And fun fact, if you're ever trying to quit drinking and you're looking for a little extra motivation, you can always remember that alcohol is literally just yeast shit. It's sort of like Slurm from Futurama if we really get down to it. So anyway, yeast eats the available sugar in a liquid, and if you don't ferment it, you end up with something like beer, wine, or cider. You know, something that's roughly 5 to 15% alcohol. Which is great, it can get the job done in some cases. But maybe you're looking for a little extra kick, or you need a tad bit more potency for some more practical purposes. Well then, 5 to 15% just isn't gonna cut it, and that is where distillation comes in. And since you're gonna be hard-pressed to find a strainer thin enough, to strain out the alcohol, you need to boil it. And since the boiling point of alcohol is 173 degrees and the boiling point of water is 212 degrees, the alcohol boils or turns to a vapor or a gas before the water does. And if you catch that vapor and run it through some copper tubes like you've seen in a Dukes of Hazard movie, bam, you get closer to pure alcohol. And you can repeat that process over and over again until you do get pure alcohol. Then you can use that alcohol to make yourself a stiff drink, duh, or you can use it to sanitize surfaces like with rubbing alcohol, or you can even run your car on it. It. Alcohol is just ethanol. The E85 you can get at a gas station is 85% alcohol or ethanol and 15% gasoline. It can also be used as an antifreeze. It can be mixed in with a gel to make hand sanitizer. You can even use it as a fuel to keep food warm in those little burner deals underneath a buffet. But the benefits of distillation doesn't stop with the magic solutions yeast shits out for us. It can also make the elixir of life safe to drink. You've heard of distilled water and it's the same process. The only difference is that instead of trying to separate two liquids, you are just trying to get pure water and leave behind harmful remnants. So if water has something in it like lead, arsenic, or salt, like ocean water, for example, this process will leave all of those behind and just give you pure water. And while that may seem simple enough, it's a system that makes some of the most complex things out of this world possible, like space travel. The space station can't exactly just hook up to a city tap, and water's heavy, so you can't bring a lot with you when you go. But people need water, and most astronauts probably wouldn't sign up for the job if they had to go all Bear Gryllis for a year on the space station, so distillation is the solution. Distillation gives people an extreme and remote situations like astronauts clean water from their wastewater. And it's crazy to think that the distilled water you buy at the grocery store is the same stuff that makes space travel possible. But distillation doesn't stop making space travel possible there, it does it in other ways as well. Rockets need fuel to get out of the atmosphere and a lot of it, and one of the most common types of rocket fuel is a form of kerosene. And kerosene is made from crude oil, the same stuff that makes our gasoline for our cars, the diesel for our trucks and tractors, the motor oil that keeps your engine lubricated, the propane that makes Hank Hill horn and a thousand other products. And all of those products are extracted from crude oil through refining, which is just another fancy term for distillation. Those big towers you see at oil refineries are basically just big complex moonshine stills. Each petroleum product, motor oil, gasoline, diesel, propane, they all boil off at a different temperature. And those products are extracted and cooled and sent to power your car, your truck, or your rocket ship. But distillation doesn't stop there because you can even distill the air. We think of the air as a gas and not a liquid, but that's only because the air is literally boiling. If you cool it down enough, it becomes a liquid, just like if you heat water up enough, it becomes a gas. Air just has a much lower boiling point than water. But you can cool air down enough to turn it into a liquid. And then as you heat it back up, the different components that make up air, oxygen, nitrogen, argon, carbon dioxide, they all boil at different temperatures. And then you can pull them out and use them for whatever purposes you need. But tying using freezing to distill something back to something we all enjoy, which is a good drink, you can distill something without boiling it. There's a process called freeze distillation. It's how Applejack is made. Because because just like things boil at different temperatures, they also freeze at different temperatures. And alcohol and sugar have a lot lower freezing temperatures than water. So if you take something like an alcoholic apple cider and you freeze it, the water will start to freeze while the alcohol and the dissolved sugar will not. Then you just strain the remaining liquid from the solid water, and you have yourself a sweet beverage with a bit more punch and there was no boiling required. And the fact that the discharge you derive from distillation can provide drinks for you and what you drive in droves, well that is pretty mind-boggling.